Hello. In this video, we're going to look at some counting problems, uh, the sort of which one could expect to find on the Math Kangaroo contest uh, for grades 11 and 12. Uh, but these counting problems are specifically going to be coming from uh, setups that are geometric in nature. I just want to remind you before we get started that the way to get the most out of this video is to pause uh, before, uh, once you've read any of the problems, pause the video before I give my solution and try it out on your own. So in this first question, we're asked to consider a sphere of radius 3 with center at the origin of a Cartesian coordinate system. And we're asked how many points on the surface of the sphere have integer coordinates. So recall that the equation for a sphere uh, with uh, radius 3 centered at the origin is x squared plus y squared plus uh, z squared equal to uh, the radius squared, so 3 squared, uh, which is 9. And so we want to know uh, how many different choices there are for x, y, z such that uh, they satisfy this equation. Well, one thing we can do is uh, start writing out some of the squares. So uh, 0 squared is 0, 1 squared is 1, uh, 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, as we just saw above, uh, 4 squared is 16, and so on. And so we can see right away, uh, since each of these are squares, uh, these are all going to be positive numbers. So none of the coordinates can be equal to 4, because 4 squared is 16, and we would have a, a 16 on this side of the equation, uh, but that's already much larger than 9. And because the other numbers are positive, uh, nothing can subtract uh, from the 16 to make this equation balance. Uh, so we know that definitely the numbers, the possibilities for our coordinates are only going to be uh, one of, uh, out of these. So let's focus on the first largest one. What about 3? So one thing to notice, for 1, 2, and 3, uh, there's actually two solutions to these, right? So uh, minus 1 squared is also equal to 1, uh, minus 2 squared is also equal to 4, and minus 3 squared is also equal to 9. So if one of our coordinates was equal to 3, uh, could be x, for example, uh, well then uh, x squared, which is 3 squared, is equal to 9. And like we said before, these numbers here, these are non-negative, so nothing can possibly uh, at, subtract. And so the, these both sides of the equation are already balanced, so that would force the other two entries to be zero in this case. So we have three choices for uh, whether it is x, y, or z that is equal to three. And then we're multiplying that by two more choices because remember, we can choose to take uh, any one of those to be positive three or negative three. Uh, so, so far our count is at six possibilities for integer coordinates. Uh, now, what if none of our entries involved a 3 at all? Let's say one of our entries uh, was equal to 2. Uh, well, we could have uh, 2 squared being equal to 4. So let's say uh, x in this case is, is equal to 2. 2 squared would be 4. Uh, what possible choice could we have for y squared? Well, we know that uh, y being equal to 3 would give us a result that's too large, but could y also be equal to 2? Uh, so if y was equal to 2, 2 squared would be 4, and so we would have 4 plus 4 is 8, and that would force uh, z in this case to be 1, uh, which can be written as a square. Uh, 1 squared is equal to 1. So more generically, uh, we could choose any two of x, y, or z uh, to be equal to plus or minus two. So uh, in other words, to determine the number of, of cases here, we would take a three, choose two, uh, because we're choosing any two variables uh, out of the possible three. Uh, well, this is uh, simply equal to three. 
So for our total count, we have three, uh, but then uh, any one of these uh, variables could be positive or negative. So here we could choose a plus or minus two, here we could have chosen plus or minus two, and here we could have chosen a plus or minus one. Uh, so we need to multiply by two for each of those cases, two times two times two, for a total of 24 possibilities in this case. Now, what if just one of the coordinates was equal to two? Say uh, this first one was four. Uh, and y, let's say, so we already know that y can't be equal to three. We've already examined when it could be equal to two. And we're asking, well, is it even possible that there could be other coordinates which are not equal to two? And the problem is, uh, is even if both of these coordinates are the next largest choice, which is one, uh, we see that the largest this can be is six, uh, which is definitely going to be less than nine. So there are no other solutions in this case. Uh, and in fact, in general, there will be uh, no other solutions because uh, if we take any of these variables to be any smaller, again, it's never going to add up to nine. So our total is there are two times three or six possibilities for one of the coordinates uh, being three, uh, plus or minus three, and the other zero. And in the other case, uh, there are 24 possibilities for a total of 30 possibilities, and so the answer for this question is A. For this next question, we're asked, for how many integer numbers n greater than or equal to 3, is there a convex polygon with n vertices whose interior angles are in a ratio of 1 to 2 to dot 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 all the way up to n? So what this first condition means here is that for our polygon, with n sides, uh, we have some angle alpha, and then the rest of the angles are alpha, uh, two times alpha, so that's the ratio of one to two, uh, three times alpha, uh, dot, 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 up to uh, n times alpha. So that gives us our ratios. And we want to know uh, which values of n is this possible for. So let's check out this first word here, convex polygon. A shape is called convex if you can take any two points in that shape, and if you draw a straight line between them, that entire line is still contained within the shape. So if we think about a polygon, let's imagine uh, there was a dip like this, and maybe some straight sides here. Uh, this would not be convex because if I took this point and this point and drew the line between them, a part of the line moves outside of the shape. So one condition we know for a convex uh, polygon is that all of the angles need to uh, definitely be less than 180 degrees, right? So if we think about this angle here, uh, that is much larger than 180 degrees and that is why the shape fails to be convex. In particular, we can see that all of these angles are drawn uh, are in an increasing order, right? So n multiplied by alpha is the largest of the angles. So certainly if we have that n uh, multiplied by alpha is less than 180 degrees, then it guarantees all the other angles are less than 180 degrees. Uh, we also know that the sum of the angles of any polygon with n vertices must be uh, n minus 2 multiplied by 180 degrees. So that means if we add up all our angles, we go alpha plus 2 times alpha plus dot 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 plus uh, n times alpha, and we add them all together, that has to be equal to n minus 2 times 180 degrees. So let's see if we can combine this result uh, with this other piece of information we have to determine the possibilities for n. Well, the first thing I can do on the left-hand side of this equation, I can factor out the alpha. So I'm left with alpha multiplied by, in parentheses, 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus dot 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 up to n uh, being equal to n minus 2 multiplied by 180. Uh, but the sum of integers from 1 up to n, uh, this is equal to n times n plus 1. Uh, divided by 2, 
So this quantity is uh, now equal to n minus 2 multiplied by 180. And uh, what I can do is, so I, I want to try and get something involving this n alpha here. So if I can move this n plus 1 and the 2 to the other side of the equation, I'll have my n alpha. So I'm going to do that. So I have n alpha is equal to now 2 uh, times all of this. So that will give me 360 multiplied by uh, n minus 2 divided by n plus 1. And now I can apply this other piece of information. I know that n times alpha must be uh, less than 180 degrees. So then thinking about this inequality that says 180 is uh, greater than 360 multiplied by n minus 2 divided by n plus 1, if I uh, rearrange this equation, so I divide both sides by uh, 180 and multiply both sides by n plus 1, I get n plus 1 is strictly greater than 2 times n minus 2. And if I, are, if I was to uh, rearrange this to isolate for n, we should arrive at the equation that n is less than 5. So we also know from the statement of the question that n is at least 3, so that only leaves two possibilities, n is equal to 3 and n is equal to 4. So our final answer is that there are two possibilities. Uh, in other words, our final answer here is B. For our final question today, we're asked, how many right-angled triangles can be formed by joining three vertices of a given regular 14 gong? So before we dive into this problem, I'm going to remind you of what's called the inscribed circle theorem. So this says that if I have uh, some circle, and at the radius here, I have two radial lines making an angle of theta. If I were to extend uh, those two lines to any point anywhere else on the circumference, the angle that is made by those lines is one half theta. So it's exactly half as big as the angle made with at the center. So in this question, we're, we're dealing with some 14 gone. So I imagine, uh, right, I'm going to have 14 vertices and 14 edges, and they're all going to have the uh, same angle and lengths because it's a uh, regular 14 gone. Uh, so I'm not going to draw all of it, but we have uh, all these lengths and angles. Now, we can make all sorts of triangles by just joining uh, random vertices together, but we want to create right angle triangles. So if we're thinking about all these points, if we uh, inscribe this polygon in a circle and we think about all the vertices as lying on the circumference of some circle, essentially what we're trying to do is create an angle at some uh, vertex on this polygon so that this angle is uh, 90 degrees. But we know from the inscribed circle theorem that I mentioned at the beginning of this problem, that if I were to take those same points and draw lines, uh, radial lines from them to the center, uh, the angle that would make uh, would be twice as much as 90 degrees, so it'd be 180 degrees. And so in fact, the picture uh, would look something like this, 180 degrees, well that's just a straight line and since uh, each of the two portions of this straight line is a radial line, uh, that means this uh, entire line going right across is a diameter line. So this means on our 14 gone, uh, we can choose any diameter line to make a circle. So how many choices of diameter line do we have? Well, it's tempting to say 14, one for each point. But remember, if I have a diameter line, uh, it's intersecting two points uh, at the same time on opposite ends. So there's really only half of those. So there's uh, seven possible choices for the diameter line. And again, by the inscribed uh, circle theorem, if I were to choose any of the other uh, points on this side of the diameter line, or rather, 
other side of the diameter line, I know that that angle by the inscribed circle theorem uh, must be half the angle that's made at the center, which is 180 degrees. So half of 180 is 90. So I can choose the third point of my triangle to be any point that is not one of these uh, radial lines. So since I have a 14 gone and I'm using up two of those points, that means for each of these diameter lines, I have 12 choices of point for the third point in my triangle. So the total is seven times 12, which is 84, and therefore our final answer is B, 84. Thank you so much for watching once again. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, you can visit mathkangaroo.ca or send an email to info at mathkangaroocanada.com.